goodness. I'm kind of in awe and sort of shocked by this all. I'm not used to seeing these animals in this state. As an animal lover, I kind of have mixed emotions about what I'm seeing. But I don't mind seeing them in the pot. I'm really taken aback seeing this monkey. Actually, it makes me feel really sad. Um, and as I'm getting deeper and deeper into this whole game area, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a bit emotional, especially when I see scenes like this. In fact, the monkey kind of looks like he's resting. I hope he's in monkey heaven right now. Moving on. Wow. I'm just in awe of this. I've, I, you know, I've never seen anything like this up close and personal. And here we have just, I think, plain old rats. You can see they've got quite sharp teeth. Madame, you call this one rabbit? Yes, but it's a rat. It's just kind of a cute and cuddly name for a rat. You know, I didn't even know that this was eaten. It is eaten. And it can be eaten the same way as bushmeat. So people are going to take this and then go and smoke it or do what they want with it. Smoke it right here. Ah, I think we're going to go and see the smoking section of the market, which I'm really interested in. And of course, these these animals also have huge uh, jaws um, for killing their prey. And not to talk about the claws. I think this guy needs a manicure. My goodness. I'll definitely have to do some research. I'll have to do some research into how these animals are, are prepared and in what kind of soups. I can only wonder. This has been an experience. Okay, so now we're going to go all the way up to the top now to a different section of the market where we're going to be able to see some of the smoking techniques which I'm really particularly interested in today. Let's go. This is the smoking section. There's lots of wood piled up for that purpose. We keep going. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody? The deer that we saw earlier on now comes here to be smoked and then cut into pieces. So you can see the outside is really quite transformed. Down here we can see this young boy is scrubbing with um, a sort of a steel wool pad. It is an essential part of the process to remove the hair and guts of the freshly killed animal for the next stage. This lady is in charge of the smoking in this section and she's going to tell me a thing or two about how she does her smoking process. <laughs> The necessity of living a nomadic existence in days of old, seeking new lands for settlement and searching for food, meant taking sustenance in preserved form. 
It was about ensuring that for prolonged periods of time, you had access to food. Smoking, drying and salting, pickling, preserving in oils and honey are just some methods employed. Traditional hot smoking is what we're being shown here and is most common in this region of West Africa. So I'm here with Sarah and this is her smoking operation and it's very very hot here in fact my eyes are stinging from the smoke if you look you can see a variety of some of the meats that we saw um, when they were in their uh, freshly killed state we've got the uh, pangolin we've got some of the bush dog um, and the antelope is also here and we have some smoked fish pick one up this is smoked catfish yes and i want to ask sarah to just explain to us the process that goes on here she's telling us that she first puts the meat into the big pot to boil and when it's boiled she now takes it off and puts it directly onto the smoker this is a pangolin we saw this uh, when we were looking at actually the freshly killed pangolin in the other part of the market and i'm just going to ask sarah um, how long does it take for this pangolin to to get dry um, tell us about the pangolin and we've also got fish here. Let me just pick up a couple of these. A couple of these. Okay, this is a catfish. Mm. And how long does it take for this one to get dry? It's very dry. Yeah, I'm going to show you what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what I'm going to show Sarah has told me that this pangolin would take about two or three days to become completely dry the way you know the customer would want it and the fish about two days. So that's a long process of smoking that's going on. Sarah's told me that this um, hot smoking technique is the only technique that's used in this market or in this area. And ever since she was a small girl, this is what she's known. Thanks, Sarah, for showing us all of this. I want to buy some of your smoked fish to take back with me to Lagos. Mm -hmm. The traditional technique of open-air hot smoking is a relatively easy, economically viable source of income for Sarah's family, providing a staple for many indigenous dishes. The surrounding waters provide life-giving sustenance for many here. This trip has been really eye-opening and enabled me to think beyond the food I receive or serve on a plate. It gave me a reason to relish explorations beyond the familiar and connect with something much deeper. A renewed respect for the human machine driving our basic necessity to nourish ourselves and our loved ones. I'll be returning here for sure. Next time on Food Journey, I'll be showing you how innovation and dedication can produce incredible pleasure on a plate. See you there.